Good decision on your part to join us in the trenches with Dave Lapham today. Brought to you by First Star Logistics. As always, our outstanding studios are where we do it from. Because Alex Kappa is in the house. And uh, this guy is he, hes just one good dude. Not only a really, really good football player, one heck of a human being. And uh, you will you'll see that very quickly. We do talk about his football career. We talk about, you know, uh, playing at Humboldt State and being drafted in the third round of the National Football League and the transition involved there and, you know, what it's like being a member of the offensive line and how tight offensive lines are and, you know, the fact that uh, he's part of one of the biggest offensive lines in captivity right now with the Cincinnati Bengals. I mean, it is a, a huge front wall that can eclipse the sun. And four of the five guys have won a Super Bowl. A lot to talk about with Alex Kappa. He talks about it oh so well. Thanks for joining us in the trenches with Dave Lappin, brought to you by First Star Logistics. As always, we're coming to you from our outstanding studio that First Star Logistics provides. And we are being joined by an outstanding guest an outstanding offensive lineman with the Cincinnati Bengals. His name is Alex Kappa. Appreciate you. Thanks for joining us, big fella. Lap, what a pleasure. Always great to talk to you. Thanks for having me on. So you are a member of the biggest offensive line in captivity, I think. I mean, it's it's unbelievable. You it's guys, oh, this front wall is huge. Dude, All right. I feel like- I feel like I got to start gaining some weight. Otherwise, I'm going to be looking like a little guy out there. Man. I mean, me. oh, Orlando Brown, 6'8", what, 340-plus, I guess. Uh, Volson, 6'6", plus, 315. Ted's the shorty, 6'4", 310. You're set 6'6", plus, right, at, in 310. Yeah. Uh, Trent Brown, 6'8", and I don't know. They're saying 370. I don't know what the man weighs, but he, he is Man Mountain Dean. I mean – that that is that, that's like an NBA you know front line man it's it's and the and the other thing that is significant to me four of the five guys have won Super Bowls you know I mean four guys in that offensive line um, we got to make five lot I mean it, make five. I'm telling you it's like you know you guys aren't only big physical talented. You've won the big game. You've won the game at the highest that, that you know, everybody strives to win, the one at the highest level. Uh, four of you have done that. Man, that bodes well, doesn't it? I think so. I think the the good thing is we've all played a lot of football, even even Cordell now. I mean, in two seasons, he's played a lot of games, you know. Um, so we'll have a lot of experience. It'll be fun to work together. Obviously fun to get Trent in there. Um, and, yeah, I'm looking forward to it for sure. And, you know, we, we've talked about this before. The, the thing people don't understand is it, it, the the line, it, it has to gel. You know, I mean, it has to – you have to feel comfortable with the guy on either side of you. You have to feel good about is he set deep, does he set short, what does he like to do, how does he handle this stunt, all that sort of thing. Uh, and, and really, you and Big Trent are going to be going through that process, but everybody else is has played a lot of snaps together in that regard, right? Yeah, it's always good to have continuity, man. And um, I'm lucky with Trent sliding in there that he's played so much football. Uh, I don't know how many starts he has. I feel like he's got a lot, though. He's going into year 10, so yeah, um, he's been around, man. And uh, so, yeah, we should have a good continuity among the group. I look forward to working with him. And uh, it's always fun getting back together with the guys. Man. And that's, that's the thing. I remember, you know, back in the day, you know, playing, you get, you're away from your teammates for a while. I mean, the guys that live in Cincinnati – would go down and work out, you know, on a year-round basis. You'd see some of the guys, but most of the guys you wouldn't see. And that first day back, man, it's like, hey, hey what's you know, it's like a it's like a family reunion again now, isn't it? Yeah, it's a good time, dude. It's a good time, and it was good. I met met Trent today in person for the first time, so it was good. Um, yeah, seeing everybody, you know, everybody's joking, everybody's having fun. It's um, it's always it's, we have a great great chemistry, great team environment. So it certainly was a lot of fun to be back in the building today. Now, Trent has a reputation of being the eraser. You know, it's like he's he's an unbelievable pass protector. He doesn't have to have a whole lot of help. Don't have to chip with the back or with a tight end. You can get guys out in routes and all that sort of thing. I mean, that that's a that's a big plus for quarterbacks, coaches, and and you guys up front with the offensive line. Uh, does he seem like a pretty uh, pretty easy guy to get to know? Is he is he your typical offensive line dude? 
<laughs> so far, so good, man. So far, so good. Um, and yeah, like you said, I mean, he's played a lot. He's played at a really high level. Um, so I look forward to working with him, and I think get us on some combos. I'll, I'll like to have that that big body coming down helping me out. You know, I'm telling you, man, you guys are gonna. We just went through the eclipse. You guys are gonna be eclipsing a lot of people, man. It's gonna be that offensive line runs out there with the with the size and the. I mean, you could put a big billboard across the back of everybody's back, man, and get uh, you know, get some good advertising. It, 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 that it, it's going to be impressive to watch you guys perform. Um, I, 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 I'm assuming Frank Pollock is is going to be extremely excited about about getting uh, back to it. You guys now are just started where you can do your uh, your off season workouts. You're not doing anything together as a team and all that sort of thing, but you can work out and do your individual workouts, correct? Yeah, so we got a few weeks of that where it's just uh, training with Joey Bose and the strength staff. Um, so today we lifted, we ran, um, and it's good. It's good to have a little time to ease back into it, to, you know, get in the building, get to know everybody, and that way those first couple of weeks, I mean, who doesn't love to train, you know? So it'll be it'll be fun for sure. You know, and and you talk about um, when chemistry is is uh, is formed and. Uh, bonds and all that sort of thing. This is the beginning of that process, right? I mean, it, it's this is when you get to know guys. Uh, you know about learn about their their wives, their families, everything that goes along with that. Off the football field, makes you even closer on the football field. Man, you're you know you're in one of those situations. Uh, a tense time of the game. You look at each other's eyes in the huddle, and you're like, "We got this." You know, I'm not going to mess up. I know you guys aren't going to mess up. We're good. I mean, all that starts like right now, right? Just getting that work done. Yeah, definitely. And it's doing the work together, too. Um, we we always seem to have good turnouts for OTAs, which is great. Um, and, yeah, it's doing the work together. Like, we're running out there today, and we're joking around about who's going to finish first and stuff like that. Even though it's just striders, we're just cruising, but we're still busting balls and having fun. And that's really is, uh, how it gets going. And, you know, the offensive line, I, I've always admired how you guys – I mean, the team, you know, you're trying to grow that bond as a team and everybody caring about each other, but – Man, you guys in the offensive line, it is a tight knit group now. You guys spend a lot of time together, uh, you know, off the football field when it's like, oh, man, don't you see each, enough of each other uh, every day at practice? And, uh, you know, you've seen each other more than you've seen your families, you know, during the football season. But you guys still will get together off the football field and create a bigger bond, right? Yeah. And I mean, like you said, the amount of time we spend together is significant because it's the O line. Really in the NFL, a lot of people don't know it's you really your position groups is who you're spending all that time with. Because when you're in meetings all day long, you know, especially for the O line, because we're a little more isolated, it's just us in there together all day long, every day. Those are the guys you hang out with, those are the guys you eat with, those are the guys you train with. So yeah, it's a lot of time. So when you were uh going through the off season and pick up Trent Brown and you know, other guys that picked up in veteran free agency, how happy with you were you with what the Bengals did making some additions that they made. Yeah, definitely, man. We signed some good players, some, some quality guys who uh, definitely are going to help us out. And uh, yeah, of course I was very intrigued into what we would do with that right tackle position. So of course I'm excited. They signed an interior defensive lineman, uh, Sheldon Rankin's a pretty good player. I mean, that guy, that guy's an active inside player, isn't he? Yeah. Very good player. I played him a lot, man, because we, uh, he was in New Orleans when, when I was in Tampa, so we were playing twice a year there. Then we played him with the Jets, then we played him with the Texans. So I've seen him a lot, and we'll, uh, I'm sure I'll see him plenty in training camp too. <laughs> yeah, you guys will be doing a lot of one-on-ones, uh, I'm yeah. sure, at training camp and the pass rush drills and all that. But uh, iron sharpens iron, right? I mean, going against uh, against good ones, it's that's what's going to help everybody improve. A tough, a tough loss, though, losing a guy like DJ Reader. I mean, you know, that's, that's life in the National Football League, but uh, – you know, you hate to lose not only a, a football player of that quality, but that guy's a good dude, isn't he? Yeah, great dude. Great dude. Um, really quality teammate. Definitely uh, sets the tempo when he's out there, man. I don't know if there's anybody that defends the run as well as he does, the positions he gets in and stuff like that. So uh, wish nothing but the best for him. Um, and, yeah. So when you uh, – I know I know you're you're a guy that puts in time studying tape and all that. When you took a look at your whole claw, whole body of work uh, when the season was over with, how, how did you feel about how you played last year? Uh, you know, I, you always could get better for sure. I, I don't think uh, – I try to have a high standard for myself, and I definitely think there's a lot of ways that I can improve. Um, 
Yeah, man. You, you're always working to get better, but I definitely think I could play at a higher level for sure. How about as a group? How about as an O line in in uh, in its entirety? How do you think it performed last year? Uh, I mean, I'll give the same generic answer, I guess. Yeah. Right? <laughs> we could, uh, because you really, it's it really is. I mean, we could have had the best year in the in the league, and we would still be working to improve. You know, yeah, we'd still be working to work together better and stuff like that. So there's definitely ways we can get better um, as a team and as a group. And uh, obviously, you know, we hold a high standard, so we definitely got to um, put the work in to play that way. And you lose, uh, you lose Joe Burrow, you know, during the course of the season, Jake Browning steps up and, and plays, you know, plays really well. And uh, you guys were a big factor in that. He's, he was very, very uh, quick to basically say, look, you know, the offensive line stepped up and played big for me. And that helped me, uh, do the do my job to the level that that I was capable of doing it. You guys felt pretty good about that, I'm sure. Yeah, and he's a great teammate, man. He's great to work with. We definitely had confidence in him coming in, um, and I'm sure even he he was say he he's got even more in him for sure. Um, it was it was fun playing with him. We look forward to getting Joe healthy, obviously. But um, yeah, we knew we knew he he had a little game to him, and, and uh, still does for sure. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be interesting too. I mean, no Joe Mixon at the running back position is staple for a while, but uh, yeah. you know, you've you've got some guys back there now. You you got some talent. You got some guys that can. Uh, I mean, Brown has got that breakaway speed. Uh, you you got some people in that uh, in that backfield for sure. You got talent. Yeah, we definitely do. And uh, like you said, that's life in the NFL, man. There's always going to be turnover. The train keeps moving, whether you're on it or not, or maybe you get on a different train car or something. It just keeps rolling, dude. It just. Uh, it is crazy. Um, wish the best for him as well, but that's the way the the league goes, you know. Have you seen uh, much tape of Zach Moss? I know when you study tape, you're studying defenses, you're studying opponents in that area. But Bengals uh, pick up Zach Moss at the running back position as well. Seems to be a guy that can do pretty much everything, you know. I mean, good good runner. You know, he loves the inside outside zone stuff, you know. Good pass protector and blitz pickup, and good receiver out of the backfield. Pretty solid player, it seems like. Yeah, from what I, I I don't know him well yet, obviously, but from what I've heard, very quality human as well, man. Very very good guy, smart guy, and so uh, definitely look forward to working with him. You know, Zach talked about uh, today. Talked about the fact that uh, he just wants guys to uh, get used to each other, get to know each other, and uh, and and it's all about relationships, building those relationships. I mean, Zach has always been able to to build a football team that has you know a real strong feeling for each other, hasn't he? Yeah, and I think it starts with the guys that he brings in, man. Um, when you bring in quality people, it's easy to work with them. Quality players who have uh, the same goals, the same willingness to work for those goals. Um, it makes it easy to get along with guys when you're on the same page like that. Okay, so let's go back to um, the draft or right around the draft. First, you go to the Senior Bowl. You're at, you're at Humboldt State. I'm and going way back. Yeah, going way back. And, and you yeah. go to, and you go to the Senior Bowl and you perform really well and you your team just handles it it blows blows the opponent out in the in the Senior Bowl and you put out on some good tape uh, and and solidified the fact you were going to be a pretty high draft pick and you go in the third round um, and you, you you know you win a Super Bowl in your uh, in your early stages of your career in the National Football League what was it like as you were done with the Senior Bowl and and you had your interviews and your workouts and all that sort of thing. But you had put everything, you know, that you possibly can in the books as such, and you're waiting for the draft. What was that like? It was crazy, man, because you really – I think especially when you're coming from a small school, but really most guys, like, you don't really know when you're going to go. Like, I thought I could go anywhere, like, from second round to sixth round, seventh round. You really never know, especially, like, Division II. Um so I ended up going on the – so I, that must have been the second day then, right? Because they did day one, first round. Yeah, and then second, one, third, right. second, third. And we started getting late in that second day, and I had my dad and my now wife and a buddy over, and I was like, I don't know, boys, we might be coming back tomorrow, you know? <laughs> like, uh, So then obviously it was a good relief to get that call on that day because then – I mean, not that a day is a long time, no – no pity parties for guys getting drafted, but you know, like you are hoping if you're hoping it's that day, you're like, Oh, I don't want to have to come back and do this again. You know? Right. Right. I'll tell you though. I mean, to get drafted in the top hundred, you were, you were what, I think it was 94th in, in your draft. That, that sounds right. Yeah. Yeah. Get drafted in the top hundred players 
Man, that, that's a heck of an accomplishment. I mean, when, when you did get drafted, what was it like in that room with your friends and family? Was it crazy? Yeah, it was pretty surreal. Um, I think especially with my dad, you know, because my, my dad, like, he know he knows I didn't even want to play football. He had to convince me to go play. Like I was, I was scared to go. I started in high school and I was like, ah, I don't know, dad, these other kids have already been playing. I don't know if I'm going to be able to keep up with them. You know, he's like, just go play. He had to convince me to go play. And he, ah. he kind of, you know, obviously raised me and taught me what it means to work in, uh, in sports and whatnot. And so, uh, that was pretty cool. That is, I mean, man, that's a, that's an interesting, uh, interesting story. He had to feel, you know, like a sense of uh, accomplishment and gratification and everything too, big time. You, you were a tackle though, right? In high school and college, mostly tackle. Yeah. Yeah. yeah tackle. How, how tough was the transition when you were, uh, you know, kicked inside to the guard spot in the, in the NFL? It was tough, but I'm not sure if it was like the tackle to guard as much as it was D2 to the NFL, honestly, yeah. because I went, I went from left tackle to then I've been I'm obviously mostly played right guard in my career. So that's the full swap. And then Gerald McCoy was giving me the business in training camp. Let me tell you, when I uh, he 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 made it aware that there was levels, and that I was going to take a little time to adjust. You know, that's so funny, man. My my rookie year, um, w- there was a defensive tackle on the Cincinnati Bengals. His name was Mike Reed, and he was an All American. You know, the Outland Trophy winner from Penn State. He's a concert pianist. And he, he's written hit songs now, like Inside and um, all, all these. He's he's an unbelievable guy, incredible musician now he transitioned to. But this dude, I'm telling you what, now, so this this guy had unbelievable short space quickness. I mean, he was like 255, 260 pounds. You get in this like frog stance and he was just like cat quick. And it's like, you know, we weren't allowed to use our hands back then. We had to do this stuff. And it's like, dude, if I put – any body part on him, I felt like I'd hit a home run. I, this guy was just, I'm thinking, I can't play in this league, man. I can't, I can't even see this guy. Never mind block him. It was just unbelievable adjustment. I know. I think uh, even when, when you run into somebody like that and you're first getting into the league, even yeah. like there's only a handful of guys that can adjust real quick. Like there's, th- there's a period of adjustment for sure when this is your first time doing it. And meanwhile, you got this guy who's been a pro bowler for the last eight years. You know what right. I mean? Like it's, it's going to take you some time. And, uh, and that's where the real struggle is. You're not used to not being the best. You're not used to having to work just to compete, you know, like, um, so there's, yeah, it's, it's tough for most guys when they first get in. You know, it's funny you say that my, uh, my high school football coach goes, yeah, you know, you, you're pretty good in this area. You're one of the better guys in this area, but he goes, you know, the state's a lot bigger. And then there's, oh, there's 49 other ones, you know, it's like, there's a lot of players out there, man. You might think you're pretty good, but there's a lot of guys out there and there, there's a bunch of guys, at least pretty good. Like you, you got to keep working. I mean, it's, it, it is amazing. It's an eye opener when you think, all right, well, you know, I feel like I'm making progress, but then, it's, man, you're you're only in one little one little neighborhood. You you got to go out and see the whole world, you know. It is crazy. I remember uh, I had a high school teammate, and he was he was gonna walk on to like I think it was Ole Miss or something like that. And my high school coach was like, "Hey, you know, there's a lot of guys that look like you that are gonna be going over there, bro. Like, it's not you're not. Don't just think you're gonna stroll on to campus and be that guy, you know. Like, it's it's a it's a tough game. It's a, the the stats of like how many people play in high school versus how many people play in that NFL, it's pretty staggering, man. And so it is. Uh, it's a you got to tip, tip your cap to these guys who make it. It's a small percentage, man. You're in a small small percentage. It's a uh, it, it's pretty it's pretty incredible. Yeah, because I mean, high school football is it's popular. I mean, it's like every every and and it's funny. Everybody uh every player's parent thinks their kid's going to be a college yeah. all American and NFL player. <laughs> I think yeah. sometimes I, I think sometimes the kids are more realistic than the parents, you know. But uh, know. It's, it's, it's tough to know because you know you're you might you don't always know who's gonna. You might have two high school players that are similar, or two college players that are similar, and it's tough to know which is gonna be the one to transfer to the next level. Like there's a lot that goes into it on the mental side as well. There, there is, and and you know it's like the the other thing is you have to uh, you have to be fortunate in the path that you take. Okay, boy, I, do I have a good offensive line coach? Can I get along with him? Is he going to be somebody that can really teach me something? You know, I mean, if you get, 
Yeah, and your strength coach, absolutely. If you if you uh, if you get on a good path there, your percentages go way up. You get on a bad path there, whew, man. Now now you're fighting tough odds. You're you, I mean you're you're going against the world now. It's tough. Yeah, and can you stay healthy? Can you? You know, sometimes there's circumstances and a guy's been to three schools and it's like, well, what's going on there? You know, and it's like a lot has to go right, you know. So when did you think, I mean, did it ever during the course of your collegiate career? I mean, everybody in high school, it's like, okay, well, you know, I I do think I can maybe play some college football. What about when you're in college? When did you think, you know what, I might be able to play in the National Football League? Or did you even think about it? You know, like like you said how certain stuff has to line up you got to have a good old line coach all that like i was somehow at humboldt state it was the perfect place for me like i had an o-line coach who's now a scout with the broncos really he told me early on like we got to get you to the league dude i have a strength coach who's been there for 30 years who like if you ask me what he does best it's like develop a base for offensive linemen you know really? like then there was one other humboldt state player in the nfl and he took me under his wing so it was like the stars aligned for me, dude. Like I couldn't have gone somewhere better than humble as crazy as it is to where, like, I really did have people helping me and like being like putting in my mind, like, Hey, you could do this. You know, like if you, if you work for it, you performed, you could do this. So I was really lucky in that way. And you do, you have a, from the waist down, man, you're, you're, you're put together. I mean, you get a trunk on you. Is it, did it, did that strength coach, is he a big contributor to that? For sure. When I got to uh, college, like I was like skinny, like they were thinking about putting me at tight end. Like, I'd started lifting in high school, but I didn't really develop that base until college for sure. Really good strength program at, uh, at Humboldt. So you were a tight end. So that speaks to your athleticism. I mean, you, you, you've got movement skills now. I mean, it's not like you're a stiff, uh, you're a big dude, but you, you definitely got fluidity to you. I mean, you can move. I appreciate you a lot. You're hyping me up. I like that. Thank oh, you. Thank you're, you. You're, you're athletic. <laughs> you're definitely athletic. You're all right. Did you play, uh, play other sports? Yeah, I was a baseball guy um so really just baseball and football my, my whole life i was playing baseball it was one of those you know like hey you know you can play one sport pick it so i just played baseball my whole life and then uh played that all the way through high school and then baseball and football in high school what position baseball i was a catcher figured that's what i was too man i was a catcher yeah. <laughs> you gotta have the big body back there for the backstop right it's good for the mobility too you know keeps, it is. Keeps the body healthy. Yeah, it is quick, you know, quick movements to block and all that stuff. How about the gun? Do you have one? You're pretty good down to second base. Not bad, not bad. Not bad. You know, I did, I did all right. How about I was like, uh, I was like a second team all conference in baseball. So that tells you, you know, I was, a, I was all right, but I wasn't top of the food chain. You know? Ah, sweet though, man. That's that's so. Awesome. You you must have had a stick too. Could you hit a little bit? Ah, you know, I hit in that four spot when the, when the time comes. You know, I was I was, I was ready. Laugh, come on. A little formal action. We do have an action. Oh. Yeah, baby. I oh. like this. I like this. Uh, I, uh, when when we went and hit at the Reds last year, though, we were we were in the cage and I was smoking the ball. I was like, all right, I got it. And then we got on the field. I was trying to live. It was terrible. Dude. I, it was my chance to live my dream. And I freaking choked it. <laughs> but you were you were squaring it up in the cage, huh? You were ripping in the, the cage. Thing. I was the man. A little soft toss. I was that guy, dude. <laughs> Oh gosh, I hear you. So at this at this stage, uh now there there'll probably be an offensive lineman maybe chosen even in the first round, who knows? But there could be an offensive lineman chosen uh chosen pretty high in the in, in the draft, uh in this year's draft. How do you how do you take that guy in? I mean, how do you make that guy feel comfortable? Because I, I know when I was drafted, my college coach said, when you go to Cincinnati, listen. Don't say a word. Shut your mouth. Open your ears. Listen and say nothing unless asked a question. Answer the question. Nothing more than that. Yes, sir. I mean, so you, you get guys coming in as rookies, man. It's like, I don't know. Uh, in my case, I was just waiting for guys to kind of like open the door and let me in. I mean, is that is that pretty much how it goes in the old line room? Yeah, a lot of the times. And then obviously it depends on where you're getting drafted. Like if you're when we were in Tampa and we slot, we draft Wirfs in the first round and day one, he's the right tackle. It's a little different than maybe, you know, a late round guy who's trying to feel his way, you know? Um, but I, I always try to take the young guys in whenever I can, man. Cause I know how hard it is. Um, and I think maybe sometimes people forget how hard it was as a rookie coming in, you know? Um, so I always try to help out whenever I can. 
and um yeah that's the business they're always trying to replace you anyway so i'm bringing this guy in try to help him out do whatever i can and uh yeah i always i, I love helping the young guys when it, whenever I can see, you know, a guy like you is what it's all about because you know, that that's the thing. I mean, it's like, particularly the guy, you know, I'm, I'm drafted as, as a guard and the two guards, you know, that are starters are looking at me like, you know, out of the corner of the eye kind of thing. And, and I, and, and you're not, you're not stupid. I mean, you, you know how they feel. So it's an awkward thing, man, you know, until, until they give an indication to the, to the young buck that they're okay with you. And you're yeah. trying to do everything you possibly can to be okay with everybody and and get accepted. It can be. Uh, what what was it like for you as a rookie? Were the guys pretty good to you? Yeah, it was a good group, man. It was a good group. We had uh, so we had Ryan Jensen and Ali Marpet were in there, and then it was Evan Dietrich Smith, if you remember him. He played in Tampa, and he was yeah. uh with the Packers for a while. So it was it was a pretty good for the most part. You know, they give you. Once in a while, I'll give you a little something, but for the most part, they were pretty, uh, pretty welcoming to me. I would say. So, what year is this for you now? Is this number seven? It's seven, yeah. Seventh year in the National Football League. You, you got an idea in mind of how many you want to play? You just taking it year to year, or do you, do you have uh, a goal in that area? No, year to year, I have no clue. Left. I, uh, I, I feel great right now. Body feels great. So, for now, let's keep it rolling, baby. I hear you. I mean, my thing was uh, to make the team, <laughs> you know, play a year. And then when we made it the second year, it's like, all right, well, let me see if I can get vested for retirement, you know, exactly. and then get vested. And then after that, it was kind of year to year. Like you say, you know, how's the body feel? Am I, is the good Lord going to let me get through another season unscathed kind of thing? Yeah. Because if you would have asked me as a rookie and said, I played six years, I'd be like, Hey, that's pretty good. Six right. years. Geez. So like now, you know, it's like, um, Hey, as long as you can do it, you might as well keep rolling. Cause there's a lot of people who would love to be here for sure. No, no question. Thing I respect, I respect a lot of things about you, but another thing that I do respect about you is dude, you got a high pain tolerance. You got a broken forearm in, a, in the second quarter of a game, and you finish that game with a broken forearm, dude. What the heck, man? And then <laughs> you, had, you had the broken ankle, and you try to go back and play with the broken ankle Super Bowl year. I mean, for you to, I mean, how do you how do you handle that kind of pain? I think it's like uh, I don't know. Part of it is like you know you don't want to come out like say I broke my forearm, right? I didn't know it was broken. I knew it was hurting. <laughs> but I don't want to come out and then I just they're like, oh, you got a little bruise on your arm or something, you know? So I'm like, well, I got to keep playing then. And then the other thing is, it's just, you feel like it's your obligation, like to yourself, to your teammates, to all the work that you've done. Like you've already gone through all the hard part. Like, my, let me finish this game. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Yeah. It's just mindset. And I think, I think most guys that have the success have that same mindset. They're like, Hey, no matter what you're dealing with, you go, you go figure it out. It's just the way it is. You go figure it out. Man, I had a, uh, a, a injury where I was cutting off on the backside and uh, my, my elbow ended up dislocating. He caught me just perfectly. Big, big Mike McCoy, this big defense attack from Notre Dame. You could put a billboard on his butt, man. He was a mon monster. And he fell on my arm just as I was crabbing him, you know, and it goes the wrong way and snap. So it stayed like out that inverted the wrong way, dislocated. And uh, Jim Tiny, the official, and I'm like laying on the ground. He goes, what's wrong? I said, my arm. And he looks at it. He goes, oh, stay on the ground. And he signals to the sideline, and uh, medical people come out, and I go to the sideline. They grab my thumb and little finger, snap it back into place, and they just tape the sucker up, you know, in a 45-degree angle. And my, my line coach, Tiger Johnson, at the time, he looks at me, he goes, you're playing, right? So I hadn't really thought about it. Tiger was trying to figure, <laughs> trying to get through this, see, see what it feels like. No, he says, you got to play. Dude, the, the guy, the guy ain't ready. The guy doesn't know what the hell's going on. That we have to throw in. You got to go. And how'd you do? Man, I, I'm in a right hand. I'm playing right guard. And I'm in a right handed stance, but I can't put my right hand. I can't reach my right hand to the ground, so I got to stick my left hand down <laughs> in my right handed stance. And uh, and it was, and of course, Mike McCoy's eyes get this big. He's just like yeah. going after that outside arm. You know, it's like, man. I mean, it did okay though. It's like you go into survival mode. You know, I mean, it's like you're fighting for your life out there. That's what it feels like. Yeah, I remember it was like the the second play after I broke my arm. I had like kind of a, a dry block, base block on the front side, and I tried to like torque him out with my broken arm, and he just loved me. And I'm like, dude, 
And then you get, you know, you get to the sideline, you know, what the hell is this? What are we doing? And then you watch it on film the next day. Oh, okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Uh, all right. Go heal up, bud. So your arm might only have been cracked until that happened. Then it got broken. You know, I mean, it's like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you're, yeah. You're going, it's like, Oh my gosh, man. But you know, of course afterwards, I mean, I'm sure your teammates were the same way. A lot of guys come to the locker room. Hey dude, you know, way to suck it up, man. That's, that's awesome. man. what you did for the team, I'm thinking, I wouldn't even done it. My line coach is like, that's what we expect here in the National Football League, you know? It's Dude, people are like, uh, I was like, hey, I, I told you my arm was hurt. They were like, hey, you didn't say it was broken. I'm like, I didn't have an x-ray machine out there. You know, I just. Yeah. I'm not stupid, man. I don't have x-ray vision. I don't get x-ray okay. eyes. Oh, man. All right. So at this point in your career, what are you What are you most proud of? What What, what is it that uh, that as you reflect back, on the first six years going into year number seven of your NFL career, what gives you the most pride, the most sense of fulfillment? I would say two things. One, the longevity up to this point that I've just, just the fact that I've been able to do it. Like, because, you know, you look back at me in college, I had no idea if I could do it or not, you know? Yeah. And the, the second thing being uh, just the relationships, man, I feel like you could call up any old lineman I play with and, and, uh, we would have great things to say about each other. And, uh, yeah, when you, like you, you talked about the amount of time you spend with these guys, I feel like I, I've played with some really quality guys and, uh, build some great relationships with them for sure. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, get to my age. I mean, over 70, ugh, it's scary, but I mean, the, the guys that are, the guys that are still around, it's, they are, they're like brothers, man. I mean, it's, it's a bond that's never, broken guys that you went to battle with like that. I know it sounds corny. I know it's not like you didn't go to, you know, war with another country or anything like that, but it's just a high level, intense physical, you know, battle. And, and man, when you're doing it with, with guys, you, you just, it's like, you can't help but get close, you know, and those bonds last a long time, man. Dude, and it's awesome. And then, you know, you see like, uh, I had my son last year and then a teammate in Tampa just had a kid. I got a teammate here, just had a kid. It's like, it's just so cool seeing it all happen with the with the guys you're able to work with, you know. Yeah, Ted Karras had a little girl, right? Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, man, that's awesome. Now, and it is. It's fun. The best times. I mean, I've got two kids, and my son is the older. And and, and when I was playing, he was, you know, like early stage, three, four. He'd want to come down to practice. He was into it, man. Any, anything that was stuffed or had air in it, he was all about it. And he would come down to practice, go in the locker room, shake hands with all the guys. He thought that was the greatest thing. And he still, to this day, will never forget the experiences. And those are the things that, you know, man, not a whole lot of people can provide their kids, you know? Yeah. I did. I remember back in high school, we had, uh, like, I can't remember who he was, man, but he was just like maybe a, a kind of a journeyman tight end for the Raiders, came by, stopped by our high school. And I was like, oh, my gosh, man, this guy plays for the Raiders. This is crazy. Like, uh, so, yeah, I mean, for the kids, dude, it's awesome. Bro. It's so cool. It is. I mean, you, you kind of uh, – you have to kind of sit back and remember how big a role model you are, you know, for some of these young mm -hmm. kids. And uh, you don't realize it until you put it in that kind of environment. You go to these schools or whatever, and they're looking at you like you're, you know <laughs> – superhuman you know it's good it's like oh, just just like you you know just a human being here you know just lucky to be doing what i'm doing exactly. it's crazy well you do it so well you're a hell of a guy i know the uh the cincinnati Bengals think the world of you for a lot of reasons and it's obvious why they do and uh here's to number seven number eight number nine and then oh. i wanted to get when i got close i wanted to get that double digit man and i'm sure you would too it's yeah. like 10 years wow come on now that's crazy that's pretty getting good you get 10 that's pretty good you're getting close now every year getting closer all the time hey don't age me too much lap you know 29 dude. i'm young i'm spry you are and and you know what? <laughs> time for another super bowl come on. I, know you, I know you got one time for another one here we go how about how about those four offensive linemen you know you got you got brown you got Karras. You got Kappa, you got Brown, four offensive linemen, have a ring. Nothing wrong with having one on the other finger, man. Get it, get two of them, wear them out. Woo. Hey. Need them. Nice. Need them, man. Need them. You're the best. Appreciate your time. Always. Thanks. Thanks for having me, Lab. It's always great catching up with you, man.
Same here. I appreciate you, man. Dave Lapham here, and every day I am grateful for my experience to have played professional football. As a player, I realize self-motivation, leadership, and appreciating your teammates are key. At First Star Logistics, you can use those same attributes to create the life you want for you and your family. Build your future by working hard like I did. You'll see results both on and off the field. Call First Star Logistics today and be part of our winning team.